Hello music fans, I'm Brennan from Death by Unicorn and I'm going to be doing another segment of What's New 2022 which I usually do weekly but I didn't do one for the past two weeks so we've got two weeks worth of new albums to talk about and I'm going to talk about them in my order of preference. I've heard seven new albums that came out over the past two weeks and uh, usually I listen to more progressive metal, progressive rock, those are kind of my two primary genres, but over the past couple of weeks uh, the main genre has been melodic death metal actually because there's been three of the seven were big melodic death metal albums that came out over the last two weeks, so you'll be able to hear who I think won the melodic death metal wars of the last two weeks. Uh, but. We're not going to start with that, we're going to start with my favorite from the last two weeks, which is not Melodic Death Metal, it's actually a metalcore album by the band Norma Jean, and it's called Death Rattle Sing For Me, and this is kind of metalcore with mathcore and post-hardcore influences, it's their ninth album, it's an excellent release, likely in my top five metalcore albums of the year so far. And it's really great to hear interesting composition and production in the metalcore genre and to hear a band doing this style without relying too much on really low guitars and gent sounds. If you're a fan of bands like Every Time I Die and Under Oath, then you'll probably like this release from Norma Jean. The second album that I'm going to talk about is the one that I think won the melodic death metal battle of the last two weeks, and that's Deceivers by Arch Enemy, and this is their 11th album. This is solid, catchy melodic death metal with great growls and singing from Alyssa White Glues. I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Is it Glues, Gluz? I'm not sure. Uh, she has a powerful growl and also a great singing voice. The guitar riffs and solos are great. Jeff Loomis is a great guitar player and he's in this band. He's, he's almost too good for this band though. I, I prefer his work in Nevermore and his solo albums um, over his work in Arch Enemy. Um, yeah, I wish I wish he would do more of that stuff again, but uh, I think this gig pays his bills a bit better, so good for him for uh, being in a really successful melodic death metal band like Arch Enemy. If you're a fan of bands like In Flames, Soil Work, At The Gates, and with the mix of Nevermore thrown in there and Jeff Loomis's touch, you'll probably like this. And those will probably be bands that I'll be comparing all those, all these melodic death metal releases to, um, so I'll get used to hearing those names. And the third album I'm going to talk about is the my second favorite melodic death metal of the three that came out over the last uh, two weeks, the big three that came out. And this is called Days of the Lost by the Halo Effect. And this is the debut album. It's a band featuring former members of In Flames, and it actually sounds a lot like older In Flames, uh, which is strange for me because my tastes in regards to In Flames seem to be backwards to most people um, that I hear talking about them and that I actually like their later stuff. I like their early stuff too, but I actually kind of prefer the sound of their later stuff. And you might be more like me if you like stuff like alternative metal more than melodic death metal. But for fans of Old In Flames who miss their earlier melodic death metal sound, this album, Days of the Lost by the Halo Effect, could be perfect for you to get your fix of what you've been missing from In Flames. Uh, so if you're a fan of bands like those ones that I mentioned, Dark Tranquility, In Flames, Soil Work, At The Gates, you'll probably like this album from The Halo Effect called Days of the Lost. It was almost, it was really close between that and Arch Enemy as to which one was, was the best. Uh, so they're pretty neck and neck. Fourth album I'm going to talk about is by a band that's called a to Z, it hurts me to say Z because I'm Canadian and I want to call it Z, but they're an American band, so I guess they're called A to Z. And this is another debut album 
from a band that reunites Fate's Warning vocalist Ray Elder with former Fate's Warning drummer Mark Zahunder. When I heard who was in it, I was expecting this to be more progressive, but it actually sounds like fairly straightforward melodic heavy metal. Uh, if you're a fan of bands like Iron Maiden, you'll probably like this. Of course, if you're a fan of Fate's Warning, you'll probably like it as well. Just heavy metal, a little bit of progressive influence thrown in there, but pretty much straightforward heavy metal. And now I'll talk about, uh, so those were all albums that came out on August 12th. Now I'm going to talk about three albums that came out on August 5th that I don't think are quite as strong as the, these first four that I talked about, but still decent and worth checking out if you're into this kind of thing. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about first of the ones that came out on August 5th is by Tim Bonus, and it's called Butterfly Mind, and this is kind of progressive art rock. It's his seventh album. He's known for his work with Stephen Wilson in No Man, and he's put together a beautiful ambient art rock album here. I love the production and the sounds on this album. The composition did seem a bit basic to me though, um, and I'm not really a huge fan of the sound of his voice, but if you're a fan of bands like No Man and St Stephen Wilson, like No Man features Tim Bonus as well and he's on the vocals, so if you like that stuff you'll probably like this. I like some of his work in No Man, and uh, it's got that Stephen Wilson sounding production think maybe Stephen Wilson produced it, although don't quote me on that, I might be wrong about that, uh, but it sounds like that. And two more albums to get through here. Uh, second last one I'll talk about is by Soulfly and it's called Totem. This is groove metal with thrash and death metal influences and it's their 11th album and there's some really groovy metal riffs here from Max Cavalera. If you're a fan of Killer Be Killed or Lamb of God, you'll probably like this. And lastly, I'll talk about the third of the melodic death metal albums that I heard over the last two weeks, which is by Amana Marth, and it's called The Great Heathen Army. And it has another, this is their 12th album, so they made a lot of albums. It's filled with brutal Viking themed anthems. It seemed pretty typical sounding to me, it didn't stand out much, um, but if you're a fan of all that kind of stuff, like In Flame, Soil Work, At The Gates, Dark Tranquility, the other two albums I mentioned, like Arch Enemy and Halo Effect, you'll probably get a kick out of this too, so check it out. And that's all for today, until next time, peace out.